It's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got Eric, the technician, Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm well. Good to be here. It's good to see you. And uh, interestingly enough, no hot Nashville chicken anywhere to be, be seen. Not today. Not today. That does sound good. It always does. Yeah. We got Tria putting in the reps. Harris. Tria, how are you? I am well. How are you, Mark? I'm great. I'm great. You can tell I'm hungry because I'm thinking, when's the last time you had Thai food this week? Oh, <laughs> this week. Last week I had Thai food. Last, last week. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Um, I'm good. Happy to be on here. Good to see you. And you actually probably are hungry. It's lunchtime. Yeah, we're going to get through this. All right, we're going to get through it quickly, Please. safely. And then last but not least, you know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you doing? Good. I remember the last time I ate Thai food. No, I think you're thinking Indian food. No, no, no. I remember the last time I ate Thai food. It was February of 2020. You and Tate were in Tampa and we went to a Thai restaurant. That's how I know. This, this is before COVID. It was at the beginning. That like, place yeah, was good. It was a big, it, that was, was coming, good. Remember? That COVID was good. Was coming. I totally remember that place. How, yeah. how, do we, how do we visit Tampa and not go to Burns? Like, how did we not go there with Tate? Was well, you and I went on that trip. Out. Tate, Tate left home to go home, and you stayed one extra night, and that's the night that we went to Burns. Oh, okay, good. I so was, Tate, I, Tate missed out by going home early. That's okay. Yeah, it was like punishment. I remember that now. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. This, this vindictive Mark came out. Oh, you're going home early, Tate? That's fine. Watch this. Do you know what the dessert room is? We do. Yes, I know. I know now because it's been told to me a hundred times over. Well, it's it seems like a like a, a minute ago now. Anyways, we've got a great podcast. And because it used to be back in the day, we would all give a tip of the week. And it wasn't until Philip Ma raised his hand years ago and said, you guys are killing us with tips of the week. Please, just one tip of the week per podcast. And we thought, oh, that's great. Only one of us has to come up with a tip of the week each podcast episode. And even to this day, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's still hard to come up with a tip of the week. But this episode is all going to be about what is our favorite tips of the week. It could be a book a website, a resource, but something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to do, go improve their businesses, improve their lives. I hesitate to ask Eric Peterson to go first because I know he doesn't like it. I can handle it. So who would like to go first? I'll go first. You're going to go first. Awesome. Eric, the technician Peterson, what is your tip of the week. So my tips today are going to revolve around audiobooks. Um, I listen to a decent amount of audiobooks. And um, the first one that comes to mind, I finished, I don't know, a couple months back. And I, I remember I voxed Tate after I finished it. And um, I was like, you got to listen to this book. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. I already listened to it. It's awesome. So Um, It was Bitcoin billionaires. And as many of you know, I enjoy crypto. That book is an amazing listen or read um, just to hear some of that story. And then the next one after that that I would recommend is called The Infinite Machine, which is kind of about the development of Ethereum. And uh, I believe they're making a movie on that one in the uh, in the near future. But both of those books, um, they're both crypto focused, but good listens. 
So I'll start with that. So your tip is fake money. Yep. <laughs> That's what you want to call it. Oh, hold on a minute. We said one tip and Eric now comes out the gate with two. It's kind of, I don't have to one. these Full fancy books. crypto guys don't listen to the rules anymore. They're decentralized, Scott. You and your centralized rules. No, no, no. If we say tip of the week, he's going to go with five or six tips of the week. <laughs> and, and by the way, anonymously, and it'll be on the blockchain. All right. So for those of you let's, crypto let's people out there, here. you're loving this, this humor. For, the, for everybody else, you're like, what? what is Mark talking about? Right. I do, th I do think we should expand on it. So, um, because crypto is, is an interesting topic, and a lot of people are interested in crypto, myself included. Uh, but you know, we don't talk a lot about it. I do think it's, it is interesting. The Bitcoin Billionaire book is great. Um, the Infinite Machine, I don't know much about the story of Ethereum. So how is Ethereum different than, say, other cryptocurrencies? Um, I'm not going to claim to be an expert here, but, uh, you know, from the way that, that I would maybe best describe it for, um, someone that doesn't know a lot about crypto is, you know, Bitcoin was essentially the, the start of, of cryptocurrencies. Right. But, um, there were some things lacking in the, in the Bitcoin blockchain and how it was developed that weren't really possible and, and and the main thing being what's referred to as smart contracts and ethereum was developed to make all of that possible they wanted to develop this other cryptocurrency this in this blockchain behind it that would allow for these smart contracts and um, the flexibility and the things that can be built with these smart contracts really open up the doors to so many other possibilities and and we're seeing many of those possibilities already um, and they continue to you know develop more and more things that can that can utilize those i, I think for, for our business the smart contract is is here already correct um or it's still not ready for prime time are, are you referring to like a service out there that that you Cor yeah yeah, the yeah, I mean, contracts. certainly there's um, there's some out there that are, are trying to take advantage of some of that technology, whether it's the best solution, you know, maybe yet to be determined. But um, I mean, I just think there's so many possibilities, um, not only in our business, but in many others where these smart contracts could be utilized in a way that um, could make our lives just so much easier. Um, so, and it, essentially the, the smart contract means that it's written into the code that, you know, for example, you know, in, in selling a piece of land, well, maybe even simpler, like, uh, something that would involve royalties, like a, a piece of music or something, um, you know, you've got multiple people that get revenue from that piece of music when it's played, there might be the the musician, there might be a producer, there might be a label, et cetera. And the idea of the smart contract is as that money comes in, it can just be distributed based on those percentages to those people. So it's a pretty powerful thing and can really um, eliminate a lot of kind of extra work that we do nowadays. So, you know, if we think about land, um, you know, there's lots of possibilities in our terms, contracts, and things like that as well. Yeah, the, the future of this technology is going to be very interesting as it as it develops. I think it's so it's still early days, and I can imagine that. Um, well, I know Tate can't imagine this, but I remember a day when you didn't feel safe to make a credit card transaction online. That was like really risky. And this whole idea of doing anything like that online was like, oh, this is just, you know, ripe for, for fraud and scams. And, uh, and then we see how it developed today where, you know, it's kind of slowly over time, but um, there's a little company out there that I think most of us have heard of called Amazon. That's totally dominating. 
And I think that could be the future of money in cryptocurrency where we will all be transacting um, in that way. And it's you definitely should get educated about it. Now, whether or not you believe it or not is is completely up to you. But I think to put your head in the sand and ignore it could be a huge mistake in the same way that uh, my parents probably put their head in the sand and were like, oh, what's this online you know, thing called the internet? Right. Um, so it's, 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 it's here. We, we don't know who the winners are going to be. The losers are going to be, but just like the, the internet boom, there will be some major players that survive and, and it will be a winner take all environment, which it seems to be, that's what the internet does. So, um, great tips, Eric Peterson. I'm saying a long winded way. All right. Taria, put in the reps, Harris. What is your tip of the week? So my tip of the week has probably been given before, um, before my time, actually, but it's one of my favorite books. I, tr- I read it maybe every couple years, and that's Atomic Habits. Um, I thoroughly enjoy uh, this book. And it's one thing I, I love books that are practical, but then over time I kind of fall off and, or I you know, cease doing what I know I'm supposed to do. So it's a good reminder. Um, this book talks about how changing behaviors, oftentimes people go for the dramatic and the drastic change as opposed to just the small minute changes would ultimately end up being bigger changes down the road. So I, I love this book by James Clear. Yeah. So Tria, why did she pick like a popular book? I like I'm, it. I'm, I'm, jo- I'm totally joking, by the way. <laughs> like you know, like a, a, Atomic Habits has been like the biggest best-selling book like the last five years. That yeah. thing is, is it's been like a supernova. And I there's like a it. good reason it's a supernova. And it, I think that is one of those, those few books when fully understood is life-changing. Um, yeah. like, almost like a rich dad, poor dad was for me back in the day, just to change your mindset. Yeah. Um, yep. That's a, that's a great book just to revisit quarterly, at least annually for sure, because mm-hmm. our life is basically based on our habits. And if you're not happy with your life, look at your habits. That's, mm-hmm. that's what it is. I mean, I have a habit of talking too long on this podcast, <laughs> right? I mean, I need to change that atomically. I can make one small adjustment and just stop talking. And ask Tate Litchfield, what's his tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something else actionable, Tate. All right. So mine's not really uh, a business book. It's actually the most recent book that uh, I've gotten. And uh, due to having a young family, I live in the city. This book is called Outdoor Kids in an Inside World, Uh, Getting Your Family Out of the House and Radically Engaged with Nature. Uh, And it's by a guy named Stephen Rinelli. And he is a pretty famous... Uh, outdoor activist. Uh, He has a YouTube channel, podcast. Um, He has a series on Netflix called Meat Eater. And I really like this guy. I like his approach to, um, you know, life and sustainability. And he came out with this book and it's, it's really interesting and it's got some really interesting tips. So it might not be perfect for everyone, but if you're like me and you have a, a big emphasis of, you know, the great outdoors in your life, um, I think you'll find value in it. And your kids will thank you for it later. So not really a, a business book, but I do believe it's a quality of life book. Yeah, I think and I think if you improve your quality of life and you're getting outdoors more, that will ultimately improve your business or at least improve the way you feel about your business. Yeah, be a little for sure. More zen. So, okay, Tate, I'm just going to put you on the spot. What was your biggest takeaway from that book? You know, I'm not done with it entirely, but um, I think the number one uh, takeaway that I've had is that the more time we spend in, you know, nature, the great outdoors, the happier we become. I mean, plain and simple. And that is the emphasis here from an early age is that if you make those sacrifices to get outside, and and sometimes that's not possible for everybody. Uh, If you live in New York, it's a little bit more difficult to get out into traditional thoughts of what nature is, but it doesn't mean that time outside is ever wasted. So my main takeaway is that if it's important to me, I'm going to have to make some sacrifices so that my kids find it important as well. 
And all the studies, there's a million studies out there that prove, you know, we are happier humans when we spend out, uh, time outside connecting with something that's bigger. And um, I do think that this book uh, also kind of embodies the idea that, hey, kids can do hard things and it shouldn't always be easy for them. Take them on long hikes, go camping, put them out of their comfort zone, even if it's out of your comfort zone as well. Um, they'll only benefit from it. So great read. Uh, the audio book is fantastic. The author reads it himself. And so it's really uh, engaging and you can kind of feel his emotion and his energy in the, in the, uh, in the book. So I highly recommend it. I, I love that. And for those of you with families, I actually did a little bit of research on this and it turns out the characteristics of all happy families, it's like, there's a whole bunch of things, but the, the one thing they all happy families have in common, camping. Yeah, you know love that? of the great outdoors. Love of the great outdoors. So there you go. Uh, Scott Todd, Come what on. is your tip of the week? All right. So Taria kind of mentioned this. She said she reads that one unpopular book like once a year just to kind of give herself a restart and a refresh. But what if she could get nuggets from that book and all her other favorite books as reminders throughout the year to like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Or yeah, am I doing that? You know, like, so that's what my tip does. It, it, it's going to solve that problem. Or even for Tate, like Tate's reading this book and then guess what? He's He's got to remember to put it into practice. So check out readwise.io, readwise.io. It's a, it's obviously it's an app you can get. I think, it, I think you can also sign in online too. And basically what happens is you you tell it like, hey, these are these are the books that I like or these are my popular books. And then if you read on a e-reader like a Kindle or iBooks, well, then it can sync your favorite highlights with that. Mm -hmm. And then in doing so, it will bring them back to you on like a news feed almost on a regular basis so that you get the reminders of the golden nuggets that you've highlighted or that you've shared or that you told the app that you like. It brings it back to you and it, it allows you to go in there and just make the reading not a one-time thing, but to incorporate these things into your life. And it doesn't just work with books either. It's like eBooks, like Instapaper and all these other apps too, Twitter, all this other stuff. So check it out. I, I, I actually like this, this tip of the week and I love the way how it is completely the complete opposite of Tate's tip of the week. Where he's out right. in the outdoors, it's like here, let's let's put you on another more screens. No, no, no. See, this this is this is uh, in conjunction with with Tate's and Teria's uh, to some extent, and and almost Eric's too, because he talked about audiobooks. But look, I'm just saying that you can look at your phone even in the great outdoors. You can do that too. But you probably shouldn't, honestly. I mean, why? You're breathing the the fresh air, right? Getting the sun. I don't know. Tate, what does Stephen Rinelli think about bringing your 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 devices to the great outdoors? Yeah, I mean, you can imagine. He's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that being said, I, I do think it's uh, in all seriousness, though, this is a really efficient way to read. And I think too many people, honestly, don't read with intention. Like they'll read the book. I think I'm guilty of this as well. I'll listen to the book. And if you're not taking notes, you're not engaging or you're not highlighting, if you're not engaging with the book, well, you're probably forgetting literally 90% of what you're listening to or what you're reading. I think when we uh, listen to something and we write it down and we take notes, we, we remember like 50%. When we teach it to somebody else, we actually remember about 80%. So um, what do you think, Scott, Todd? See how I, how I boomerang that I think back. That's pretty and good. I, I do wonder, though. I wonder, like, you know, this this book that Tate was referencing. I mean, is there a complaint about taking your Atari out? I mean, I know you did this. You took your Atari out. You ran an extension cord outside, and you played your Atari outside, right? Like, isn't that what you did back Atari. in the day? Atari. 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 <laughs> Look, I, I'm not afraid. I, I played, before Tate's time. I, I played Pong, man, and in television was a great one. <laughs> yeah, Pong, right. What, yeah. what about that tank, that tank game? Remember that tank game on Atari? Oh, yeah. 
That was great. He is completely like, did you see the deer in the headlights look at Tate just a second ago? Like Atari, what's that? And then, at first, and then he's like, he's Googling it. And now he's wondering like, how old are these dinosaurs on this? On this well, thing? first I thought maybe he's making a dig at me. Like he's throwing out words I don't understand. And maybe that's a below the belt kind of blow. But then I no, realized nothing about no, you. It's, this is just early video game talk. You know, it's yeah, your, yeah. it's your true land geek nerd coming out. I like it. I welcome yeah. it. All good, man. Yeah. The war game was my favorite. That, that and uh, the pitfall, the jungle game pitfall. Oh, love, love pitfall. They yeah. probably have it in like the app store. You could probably get like a you mobile can't. version of it. Listen, you can, no, 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 hold on a minute, hold on a minute. See, there's this thing about the Atari because you would hold the base like this and it had that one stick. Eric knows what I'm talking about too. Yeah. Like you have the base, you hold the base like this and you have the stick, okay? And then the button. Now, if I got to do it on my phone, that requires, the, the, the sequence is wrong. I need the Atari base because it emulated the original video games too. The, like the Pac-Man kind of a deal. Come on, man. Right, you can't bring that stuff mobile. It's not the same. Look at that. You can get an Atari Legacy Centipede stand-up game for $4.99. I love Centipede. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've this has really well, devolved your, into some serious car. geekiness. You can play Centipede in your car now. like Probably in your Tesla, right? Yeah, I mean, there's tons oh. of games. Yeah. Oh, look at look at this, Mark. Hold on a minute. I I just googled this thing, man. You can get the on Amazon. You can get the Atari Flashback Eight Gold with those controllers. How much? Oh, and pitfalls included in it. Holy cow, man! Oh my oh, gosh! Goodness. I know. I know what I'm getting you. No, I do not need this. No, no one, no one needs need this. this. It's just a cool gift. No, no, it would have to be returned. Can't, it can't, it's not sustainable. All right. Well, if Frogger's on there too, man. Frogger, oh, Frogger. good one. Frogger was so good. There you go. I, you know, yeah. I, I, yeah. The controllers just, have cords on them. Yeah, the bad, the good ones do. Oh yeah, <laughs> Eric. How what, close what, to the TV. What was your video sit? game of choice as a kid? Um, I remember playing Pitfall and Frogger both. Um, and then Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, the great yeah Super Mario Brothers is great. The great thing about Pitfall is like you kind of felt like Indiana Jones. I was like, what yeah. was like like was that yeah. like the early eighties, right? Uh, I remember it. I thought it was like in the 70s, man. Late 70s. Was it, was it late 70s? 1982 is when Pitfall came oh, out. Wow. 82. Oh, yeah. Mike wow. Tyson's Punch Out. We played a lot of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Gosh. <laughs> Anyways, I've got a tip of the week. Yeah, um, what was yours? I mean, come on, man. I, I thought. You know, because everyone's like, oh, do I need a website? Do I need a website? Do I need a website? I thought, well, here's a one-page website that you could get for free. That's really simple, responsive, easy. Just it's it's build one-page sites for pretty much anything. Personal profile, landing page to capture emails, or something a bit more elaborate. It's called C A R R D dot C O. C A R R D dot C O. Card dot C O. And it's free. Now, if you want like to make it like a custom domain, no. um, you want to publish more than three sites from a single card, you want forms like uh, sign up, like Active Campaign, ConvertKit, MailChimp, uh, you know, any of those, Google Analytics. You want to get rid of the branding. You want widgets and embeds uh, from third party stri- services like Stripe, PayPal, Gumroad, Typeform. Guess how much that is per year to get all that optional GoPro. It's not $9.99 a month. It's $19 a year, which is literally less than Scott Todd and his donut this morning. I don't think a lot of you don't know about his gluten-free fancy donut. In Tampa. Gluten-free? Gluten-free. From, from, a, from a specialty baker that charges twenty two ninety nine dollars for the special no. donut. Gold-encrusted. No, 
That's only for the ones he's flying in from Brentwood. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The Beluga Caviar Donut. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyways, uh, how great is this that we don't now have to talk about our tips of the week? Yeah, we're done now, right? Um, yeah, let freedom yeah. ring. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to let freedom ring. <laughs> I do want to say uh, today's <laughs> podcast was sadly sponsored by Flight School. Learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, and efficiently. Scott Todd, as your Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training, the landgeek.com forward slash training. Oh yeah, and that flight school tuition ain't gonna cost you nothing. Guaranteed, you're gonna make that tuition back 180 days or less. Cash, terms, deals, just show us your work. It's that simple. Just show us your work. That you showed up to do it. All right. Um, I want to talk about one last thing before we go. Top Gun. Mm. No, some of us haven't. No, seen. no, no. Like, just like, have you seen Top Gun? Are you going to see Top oh, okay. Gun? Is it worth seeing Top Gun, Tate? Oh, it was awesome, man. It was great. I loved every minute of it it was it was classic but it was a modern day twist on it so it was fantastic great it was just great okay eric have you seen it yet i have not i'm really excited to see it though Tria? i'm excited to see it we didn't have time this weekend but sometime scott. before next weekend i hope we can okay great scott todd how about you I haven't seen it, but I will. Okay. I'm going to go see it. Um, I did watch an Apple TV per Zeno's recommendation. We crashed on Apple TV. Did you guys see that? No, he didn't give us that recommendation. It's, it's the story of we work. And uh, it's crazy. It is crazy. Um, but there are some interesting business lessons in there. So when you guys see it, we can discuss it because it actually does apply um, to, to some interesting business principles or lack thereof. So it's pretty good. Anyways, I want to thank the listeners, remind them the only way that we're going to continue ranting and raving about various topics is if you do us three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of your review to support at the and we're going to send you for free a signed copy of dirt rich and i might even read your review in real time we'll help out all our financial egos so please do it thank you all right let's do this one two three let, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring boy we're, our enthusiasm today has just been off I think it's just, I'm recovering from COVID. Everyone seems tired. It's summer, man. We're just, the the, the energy is just not there. But maybe next time. Maybe, yeah, next time we'll we'll bring it. Don't be jacks next time. (laughs) What's that? Better start doing some jumping jacks for next time. Yeah, no kidding. I don't know. Anyways. Thanks, everybody. See ya. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.